I gotta say, this is a video I definitely didn't want to have to make. We're out on a test drive today. Drove to Amherstburg and back, and car was doing great, you know. Even under wide open throttle, it worked good. Everything was happy and hunky-dory. Um, I was coming back from uh, Timmy's. I went to grab just a cold drink for, you know, just to chill out. Had the clutch pushed in from 80 kilometers an hour. I was slowing down. I was on the brakes coming up to a stop sign. I shifted out of gear and I was waiting to get back into gear while the car is slowing down. And then a couple of noises, pink, pink. And the, uh, the clutch exploded on me. Now, I'm sure this has a lot to do with its life in the previous car because if you remember, cue the giant burnout clip. That's a pretty hard shift from first to second. I mean, the tire goes from a dead stop back to full tilt at wide open throttle. So I did look at the clutch when we had it out. I didn't see anything out of place. It didn't look cracked or broken. Doesn't mean anything. It might have been damaged at that point. It could have been damaged even before I did these things. But anyway, it exploded on me. At least the clutch, as far as I know. I have to pull it out and find out what the rest of it is now. So at least I'll be working on a clean engine and a clean trans because everything is now <laughs> refreshed, let's say. But uh, runs awesome. Car's running really good. It's got plenty of power still. Just uh, can't put any of it down with the clutch non-existing. So um, yeah, now we're going to rip that apart and see what we find. I mean, it's also plausible to think that uh, the clutch fork is out of alignment here and has, has kind of messed with some things because I know there's a spring retainer on that clutch fork that uh, was a no-go and it's supposed to fit on that ball for the adjustment and yada yada yada. That adjustment was all messed up too from the other car. I kind of kept it exactly like it was hoping that that was going to get it by but anyway. So it's all getting gone through now and it's going to have to get dealt with. Um, I'll have to either repair a clutch, repair the clutch fork if there is some damage to it, or get a different one, one that's not busted. But uh, regardless, we'll get through it and make it work again, and that's the story. I'm sticking to it. Well, guess what, folks? Ah, earlier this afternoon, my daughter came out here. <laughs> we worked together. And we were able to pull out the uh, the trans, so it's now at least ready for parts um, for what we need to uh, repair and make it work again. Let's check out the carnage on the other end. So the flywheel looks good. There's no real issue that I saw with the flywheel. Um, the one problem now, and this was kind of a known issue already, is the clutch fork retaining spring is supposed to fit on the ball there on that ball socket, it, uh, it's busted off and missing, so there's nothing that's actually retaining it in place. So it's possible that this thing must have moved, or it's possible it moved when it was installed. So this fork is gonna get at least reviewed and looked at. I'm gonna see if I can't figure out a way to fix the spring or replace it or something. It, it, I'll see what I can do. And I think at the same time, I'm gonna add this. There's some strengthening that can be done to this clutch fork. With, with a little bit of welding and some plates just to stiffen it up for future. Um, like it works as it should work. Um, it's just not, uh, not the most reliable at this point now. So whatever, fine and dandy. There's what's left of the clutch. So <clears throat> for those of you that aren't necessarily familiar, normally there's material here that's riveted in place um, and it looks a lot more like what this side looks like. You can see the rivet heads, so that's kind of your gauge, how much clutch material is left, you know, how are the rivets exposed, and this clutch had enough material left, um, but then this side of it totally just disintegrated. You can see the loose rivets now. Those are all scraped and worn down. This is the pressure plate side, so if you look at the pressure plate, you can see the gouging in the pressure plate from those rivets because I drove the thing home. I'm not ashamed to say that. I wasn't too far from home and it was, 
it was already ruined and I figured it was gonna be toasted. Um, there's pieces of clutch wedged up inside of the pressure plate. So one of the fingers hasn't released all the way. I could probably get that back into position, um, but the face of this wheel should, or the face of the uh, pressure plate should probably get machined. It's got some nasty gouging in it. But at this point now, it's just gonna get a whole new clutch kit. I've got one that's uh, been put on order from the parts store, and hopefully I'll find out shortly how long that's gonna take to get here, but uh, doesn't matter, it's done now, so yeah, she's toast. But that's what we expected. I mean, I beat the snot out of the clutch when it was on the other car, and this is probably the price I paid. So while this is out, I had one issue with this trans, not a big one. It's the retaining bolt that's supposed to hold in the Speedo cable. It, uh, it's stripped out. So I'm gonna run a little bit of a larger bolt and a tap in there and get those threads cleaned up and ready so then this retainer will still work as it should. And I think that's everything I needed to deal with on this transmission, and it should be 100% ready to go um, again. All right, off camera, transmission's been pulled, and I was trying to get my hands on a Chevette clutch. Now there's probably some out there that are obtainable through maybe Rock Auto or something. My local parts guy was trying pretty darn hard. They couldn't get a hold of one for nothing. Um, so the typical, you can see the damage to this pressure plate. It gets got grooves cut into it, so the pressure plate's gone. The clutch halfway exploded. Fine and dandy. See you later. So I was informed that there's an optional upgrade. Upgrade, say that term loosely, um, to a different clutch that's still compatible with the Chevette. It's a little bit larger diameter and it comes off of somewhere between like an 84 to 90 S10 with a 2.5 liter. And it is the same bolt pattern on the pressure plate and the clutch is slightly larger. Let me show you the difference in size there. So the spline count is the same. The layout of the splines is, the, is the identical. Overall diameter, just slightly larger. However, it fits like stock. It's also more physical material. Looking at the pressure plate side of things, the same sort of game applies. We've got a larger machined surface to accommodate the larger clutch. Uh, it's just a little bit bigger internals, but exterior dimensions and the existing holes all match up as they should. So that means it's a viable option to just go with the S10 clutch kit with the pressure plate and we're going to adapt that to our chain. So inside the, the rear bell housing here, the throw out bearing, um, good to go. The post that the clutch fork sits on needs to be adjusted. Now my clutch fork, yeah it looks ridiculous because it's now gold. So one problem with these clutch forks under heavy usage, they have a tendency to warp and bend and break. Mine had two problems. Well, mine had one specific problem with it. It was missing a spring clip. So some of you might recognize that little gold fella at the end now, but that's uh, like a brake line retainer, spring loaded clip. And it just so happens that it fits perfectly over top of the uh, adjustable set screw on there now. Um, so that solved my problem. And then I also boxed in the bottom end of the clutch fork and I welded up where the, where the uh, slots used to be cut into it. So this should add a little bit of strength to it based on my research that I did and that uh, other people have already contributed to the Chevette owner's pages. So hopefully I'm not gonna have any clutch fork issues with the little bit larger diameter um, clutch that's going into it. I can't imagine it's gonna be much more than what it was, but everything's also gonna be appropriately uh, lubed up and working. So I'm gonna get this end of the, of the uh, of the business end here. I'm gonna get the uh, clutch fork installed and prepped and ready, and then I'm going to go under the car. We're gonna clean the uh, flywheel, and we're gonna install the clutch and the pressure plate and get everything ready. I don't know if I'm gonna get this all installed tonight because it's a little bit later of a start, but we'll see. He'll go as far as we can go until I run out of energy here. But uh, regardless, let's uh, dive into it. Oh, 
I'm probably getting 25% more surface area on the sake of the flywheel for a contact patch. I guess if anything that means this clutch should just last longer because it's got more surface material to, to touch and probably wouldn't heat up as much if you were riding the clutch a lot or something. So making a note of what direction faces the flywheel is important. If you look at the back side of this clutch, it's actually stamped into it and it says flywheel side right in the body of the clutch. So if you read it, it's pretty hard to screw it up, but uh, it's in position now. Now we get the pressure plate and we align the pl pressure plate over the six mounting holes, put a little bit of thread lock, and run those screws in and torque them down. So I've got my thread lock here as well. We're gonna turn on a little bit of that. There's a tiny bit on the bolt there. And we're gonna start by running that fella in. Let's get this pressure plate up there first. Like so. Make sure that our perimeter holes line up all the way around. That'll tell us that we did this right. Aside from a clutch adjustment, which it probably does need, um, and filling the trans with the gear oil, I think we're set underneath the car for tonight. All right, we're back in the barn again tonight. Got my Chevette cookie. So the plan tonight is to hopefully wrap up the transmission install. Um, Maybe we'll get around to putting the console back together or something, but I'd like to be able to button it up 100%. Um, I don't think there'll be enough time for a test drive tonight, but getting all the loose ends closed up and everything finalized and uh, running it while it's up on the stand so I can make sure that the clutch does what it's supposed to do. That's the goal, so let's see if we can make it. All right, just about to get the trans oil back in there. This is the stuff I drained before and saved because it was clean, so it's going right back in. So I have to admit something here. I didn't realize it until late last night, and when I realized I was already finished recording. I had the clutch fork in wrong yesterday. Um, what happened was where the throwout bearing fits into the clutch recess there, where it kind of latches in place, uh, I had those spring clips in the wrong position, just like the instructions tell you 10 times not to do. I did it, of course. So I thought, okay, all I have to do is push the clutch fork up, unlock it from the spring clip, which I created. I, I had to make a spring clip on that clutch and basically slip my way around. I should be able to unlock it, pull it back down without dropping the trans. Fine, hunky dory. So I played with it for maybe five minutes and then, <laughs> and then the spring clip I welded broke off. So I had to drop the trans and take out my clutch fork, fix what I was trying to fix with that spring clip, install it properly, and then put the trans back in. And it's still the same night, here we are. So the drive shaft is in now, trans mounts on, clutch cables in, speedo cables in, reverse plug, reverse light switches in. I have to put oil in here. And I think that's everything under the car. I'll give it a once over, but I'm pretty, about 90% sure that that's gonna be all the details underneath the car that need to be dealt with. So that's cool. Um, I still have to do the uh, center console, I'll have to put the shifter in, like the, um, what do you call it? Uh, I'll have to put the uh, actual shifter on the top end of the trans, 
uh, just a little bit of RTV and seal it up in there and off we go. So it's going to just take a bit of time, but I'll get this sucker filled back up with oil. And we'll be ready to go up the top side of this thing. Okay, I think we are finally at that stage of the game where we can actually go ahead and fire this up and see what's going to happen. Um, I'm, I've got oil in the trans, the rear uh, drive shaft is connected, my spring return works nice on the console, I'm finding all the gears for fun, the clutch has about an inch of play in the pedal. And my goodness, does that feel nice. Positive engagement. Oh, yes. All right. Well, we're going to put her in neutral and fire it up. Let's see. Give it about half a pump. That is awesome. We got to be careful because the door is closed. The clutch is in now. There's first gear. Clutch in, clutch out. Clutch in. Speedo works in first gear. Second gear. Third gear. Fourth gear. Oh, it's smooth too. All right there, folks. I'm confident that we're ready for a road test tomorrow. Boom. Second. Third. That shudders a lot, huh? This has been a lot of fun. So, console's got to get painted, test driven thoroughly, and then uh, we're good.